They are wacky and wild moments that will live in infamy. Here's my cane, and you go. <laughs> These guys are in their 70s. CFL craziness from fan interference. Just as a matter of course, I stuck my foot out. To unforgettable fumbles. And he's going to be on the blooper reel for 100 years. And how could you ever run out of footballs? If someone happens to have a ball, if they could bring it down to the field, please. The top 10 wankiest moments in CFL history are next. We stand on guard for the Hi, everybody, and welcome to another Sports Center Top 10 special. I'm Darren Detish, and as always, we are glad that you tuned in. On today's show, we're going to look at some of the wacky moments in CFL history, moments that you really have to see to believe. We've got old guys fighting, we got fumbling, and we got plays that are just plain wacky. Now, in 1994, the Las Vegas Posse joined the CFL as part of the expansion of the U.S. You know that saying, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas? Well, number 10 is one of those moments that should have stayed in Vegas. Dennis Park was a Las Vegas lounge singer. I don't know if he'd ever heard the Canadian National Anthem. Even though it's in the United States, this is still the Canadian Football League. This had to be the most embarrassing moment in all of CFL expansion. With growing hearts, we see the rise the true and strong and free. Instead of O Canada, it was more like O Christmas tree. From far and wide, O Canada, we stand on guard for thee. National Anthem is, uh, that should be a no brainer. From far and wide, O oh Canada, we stand on guard for thee. Nobody in the stadium knew, really knew it, uh, except for the Canadian players on our sideline. Not like it was in front of 50,000 people, thank God. But, you know, it was only in front of 5,000. God keep our land. Glorious and free. You couldn't help but laugh, but it was one of those moments. Sh- wow, that's embarrassing. Oh, Canada, we stand on guard for the I thought it was pretty funny. <laughs> he felt terrible about it, from what I understand. Dennis Park, he had a chance to make it right, and, uh, and he did. We stand on Honestly, the, the first thing that went through my mind was, what's going on? You know, I mean, does everybody realize, you know, this game's over? We've won the Grey Cup here. Second and 31 yards. Now he throws downfield. Oh, incomplete. Intended for Ben Cahoon. Look at the reaction. Well, the head coach, Machocha, is celebrating already. When I was the only one that was celebrating, I came to the conclusion quite quickly that there's something wrong here, and I may have messed this thing up. But there's still one down left. But I must have been clearly the only one um, that was operating under the premise that it was third down, so clearly it was quite funny. We've seen just about everything in this great cup. Well, well, yeah. I didn't even know until, until after the game, um, you know, when you know, it was on TV and everybody was showing him kind of dropping to his knees and celebrating, and there was still one more down to play. The Eskimos one play away from great cup victory. We can sit back and laugh at it now because we ended up winning that game, but you know, unfortunately for him, it was one play too early. We had a team dinner afterwards, 
and, and that's where um, you know the, all the fun started. And, and a lot of people within the organization got their money's worth. Let me say that. The first Grey Cup played in overtime since 1961, and he is beside himself. It was clearly funny at the at, at the time, and. Uh, Having said that, um, you know, I wouldn't mind uh, reliving that a few more times over my coaching career given the opportunity. It was just a crazy windy day. I've never s kicked in conditions like that. Third and two and Jim Pop does send the field goal unit on. It's been an adventure for Sean White of late. Just coming out of the hotel that day, you just see the wind. I was just, oh no, it's going to be one of those days. Two yards out. Able to put that through, but there are flags on the field. I made that one, but someone lined off wrong. We had an illegal formation, so uh, we had to re-kick. So I'm like, oh, this is going to be this could be a problem. Is kicking into a stiff breeze, but still from 27 yards out. And White puts that up, and it is going to be knocked down. It didn't even reach the goal line. I hit it exactly the same way. Every I thought I hit it perfect, and I saw the ball just go up. And I've never seen a ball just stop in the air, go a hard right and backwards. If you're thinking we're overplaying the significance of the wind, watch this. That one knocked down completely by the wind. That hit a wind tunnel. Yeah, it, it was nuts, and it makes it tough to play football, but it's CFL, and that's the elements of part of the game. And it just died in the middle of the air. I'd never seen anything like that in my life. I was watching the, that game the next day. It was on the Monday night, right? So uh, I had Shea Emery with me and my long snapper, Marty, and we are just watching the game. We are all pretty down in the dumps because we lost the, the, the game the day before. And uh, Come On Man comes out, and it's usually picks me up and makes me happy to watch that, <laughs> but uh, yeah, then he brings up Canada. Hey, playoffs north of the border in Guelph. The field goal kicking was really fun. Sean White's a pretty good kicker, Montreal. We're gonna try a 22-yard field goal. Kick is up and it's good. It's good. <laughs> Come on, man! So Shay and Marty both kind of looked at me like, ugh, they just didn't know how I was going to react, but I stood up in my, my seat, I'm like, yes, I'm on, come on, man! So we all start chest pumping, high-fiving, it was, it was great. When we return... Well, I mean, it was truly wackiness at its finest. Two of the wildest endings you will ever see. This play is still alive! and a goal line fumble that would make Leon Lett proud. Welcome back to the show. In our last segment, we watched Danny Machocha celebrate the Great Cup one play too early. The following season, he was at it again as his Eskimos visited Regina and appeared to have this one wrapped up with just a few ticks left on the clock remaining. But as Yogi Berra once said, it ain't over until it's over. Here are wacky moments seven through five. Well, I mean, it was truly wackiness at its finest. Edmonton hasn't won here since 2001, and they're, they're one play away from changing all of that. What are the chances that you're possibly going to lose this football game? I would think, you know, they're slim to none, and Slim is about to leave the building here. That's when all the excitement started to kick in. We'll see what happens here. Edmonton pressures it forward, Butler steps up, and he's going to be sacked. We started walking on the field, and the crowd was going, and then there was just a huge huddle of all the alignment, and, and the quarterback was on the ground, and then... Play's still alive. Butler is going to rear back. He pitches now to Ken and Keith. Keith still going. Keith still oh, wow. going with it. The throw is not over yet. They lateral it back, this time to Andy Fantuz. And twos, laterals. This is a lateral. This play is still alive. And now I'm starting to wonder this can't actually be happening to us. It's Grant, and he throws it back to Ken and Keith. Can it happen? No! Inside the 10 yard line. It was bizarre. It was strange. It was wacky. Let's just let this one breathe a little bit. There's the, the I mean, I think the ball should have been down there. I don't know why this play continued on. It felt like the play took literally a couple minutes and um, I mean, just standing on the sideline, you're, you're helpless. <laughs> we should have music to this. I'm just waiting for the band to come out from the end zone. Andy Fantuz ends up making a good play here because he gets way across the field. Right near the end, I, I remember uh, I remember Kenton got the ball back about the 15, and 
He had myself and then Rocky were both in like the rugby lateral positions. He had an opportunity with two or three guys to his right to pitch it out. Oh my. Looking back, if he would have if he would have passed it to me, uh, I would have scored or 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 I could have given it to Rocky and he would have scored for sure. Danny Machocha is just going through the gamut of emotions right here on this play. Danny's one of those guys that wears his emotions on his sleeve. <laughs> my, my heart was pounding. <laughs> Think back to the Grey Cup last year. Oh, yeah. He thought he'd won in a play earlier. Uh-oh, no, it won't happen to me again. <laughs> they were probably one lateral away from, uh, you know, taking that streak from from five years to six years. And that play will be on all the highlight shows tonight. And had it gone in, it would have been the most memorable play of this CFL season well, without question. Geez, we, we, we should have had it. <laughs> it will bring out Damon Duvall for the game winner. We had our kick out team in because we know if, if they missed it and got it through the end zone, then we'd lose the game. So we want to get it out of the end zone. First option is you run it out, get it just past your goal line and kneel down. Second option, if you don't think you can run it out, is you kick it back out into the field of play. 36 yards for the win. One point would also win it. Here we go. Duvall, the kick is up. It is wide. Knocked down, now they have to kick it out, and they do! Gotta get five yards. Now Duvall kicks it back through. Gotta kick it out again. They will kick it out, but they don't get it out. Who has the football? I think we were all a little confused. It was just kicking it back and forth. They kicked it, now we kicked it, now they kicked it. Not really knowing what was going on. It's a touchdown, Montreal. I remember after the game, everybody kind of standing around and Nobody really knew if the game was over or what had happened. We'll take a look at it. Every time the ball is kicked, the man receiving the kick, there has he has to be given a five-yard radius to receive it. At the time the ball's touched, the Alouettes are more than five yards away. No problem there, because the Argos touched it at the back of the end zone. When Damon Duvall catches it here, the Argos have given him five yards. No problem here. But now when Duvall kicks it back into the end zone, this is the one we need to look at, and it looks like no problem because the ruling is made at the point where the Argos first touched the ball. The Alouettes were more than five yards away. Grant Shaw made a heck of an effort to try and get this one out, but this is going to be a touchdown. Alouettes win. The ruling on the field stands. Montreal will now kick a convert. I got uh, multiple calls from uh, guys back in the States, like, what is going on with your what is going on with the Canadian League? So it was upsetting to lose that game, but uh, looking back on it now, it was fun to be part of it. The bizarre way to end the football game. This guy is going to be on highlight reels for a long time. We all make mistakes. Some mistakes are just more visible than others. Trying to get to the red zone. Hump fake. Critter's in trouble. Fumbled the football. And the Lions, no, they don't have it back. It's still loose. Ronald Clemens has it, and he's got a touchdown. I saw the ball on the ground, so my defense lineman never uh, hold the ball ever, right? So I'm like, oh, I'm going to go score, right? Oh, my goodness. You better pick it up. He fumbled the ball at the goal line. I don't know how it got loose from him. My man, Ron, how, how did it happen, brother? <laughs> when I changed speeds, I guess, so the ball came out right before the end zones. I think Ronald Flemings fumbled the ball before we got to the end zone. Yeah, yeah, that's why we don't carry the ball, right? You know, that's why we're big guys go after the quarterback. We're going to take a look at this right away and see if Ronald Flemings lost the ball before he breaks the plane of the goal line or not. Oh, he lost the it. Ball's out. That's a fumble. How could that have possibly happened? That runs through my mind all the time. Yeah, I blew that chance. Ronald Flemons had a touchdown and lost the football. Of course, you're a little embarrassed and stuff. This is unbelievable. I just messed up. That's all it is. I just fell on my hands. That's all that happened. One of the most ridiculous plays of the season. Later on in the locker room, we definitely uh, had some fun with him. <laughs> there might have been some Leon Lett whispers in his ear. Can you say Leon Lett? That is crazy. Yeah, we definitely still will be giving to him. You know, we definitely still, at t uh, to this day. If I saw Ron now, I, did, I don't think I'd, I'd bring it up at all. First week, I was probably kind of upset about it or, you know, kind of like a little touchy about it. But after that, it's kind of like, whatever, man, you know? Because he's going to be on the blooper reel for 100 years. Definitely that. <laughs> still ahead, we go old school for some wacky moments that should never happen in professional sports. Things happen in that game that never happened before.
Guy almost drowned. The infamous Mud Bowl makes its mark on the top 10 while a fan steals the show at the 1956 Grey Cup. Welcome back to the show. There really is something special about the early days of sports before it became a big, big business. Athletes truly played for the love of game, and if something crazy happened, it was usually quickly forgotten. These next two moments from the 1950s are priceless. If they occurred in today's era, Twitter would explode. 1956 Grey Cup, time remaining about two minutes and 50 seconds. Parker running wide. Trying to get away from Dwyer, he does, he's over! He was looking back at the quarterback and I just reached over and grabbed the ball out of his arm and I think he was a little startled. There is general confusion here at this moment. The delay is undoubtedly occasioned by the fact that we don't have a football for the conversion. It was lost somewhere over on the far side of the field when Parker, going out of bounds and scoring the touchdown, dropped the ball. I think I had had the odd adult beverage at that time, and it just seemed like the right thing to do. I just took it, and while I was still facing the field, put it up under my coat, and turned around and walked away like nothing had happened. It's whoever the stadium announcer was, I believe at Varsity Stadium, saying and sounding in classic 1950-ish announcer voice. If someone happens to have a ball, if they could bring it down to the field, please, or something like that. If somebody happens to have a spare football and is here by Varsity Stadium in Toronto, you might uh, run in and hand it to the officials, or they might put a helmet down and try booting that over. It's bizarre. That is just totally bizarre. Well, they somewhere along the line today have lost a total then of 18 pieces of pigskin. Can you imagine running out of footballs during a championship game? The ball game is over, ladies and gentlemen. The officials have decided to let the conversion go. Edmonton beat Montreal 51 to 27. That's what makes CFL history what it is. It's glorious. The 1950 Grey Cup Championship was played in Toronto's Varsity Stadium. It had all the makings of a close game. The Winnipeg Blue Bombers, runaway winners in the West, against the Toronto Argonauts, upset winners in the East. But as so often happens in the Canadian game, nature intervened. It snowed the night before, so there was about six inches of wet snow on the field. They had cleared the snow off the field, not only cleared the snow off, they cleaned all the grass off. They had bulldozers out there. You can imagine the mess that was left after that. Gonna be a pass. Takes plenty of time. It's a long one on the far side, and it's intercepted by the Argos. It's like playing in a in big sty of some kind. Uh, it's just just slot. The old thing is you can't tell the players without a program. Doesn't apply today. The program wouldn't help you this afternoon. Things happened in that game that never happened before. Guy almost drowned. And the player is hurt over in that pool of water. <laughs> Whether he was drinking or <laughs> drowning, I don't know which. <laughs> well, you know, there's a picture of Heck Creighton and a football player bending down, looking at Tinsley and rolling him over. I was the guy. I slipped on the turf, you know, and it fell on the side of my face. <laughs> well, he, he looked like he was unconscious. He was leaning still, I must say, but he came back and played in the game. It was a real classic because where would you ever play in conditions like that? That was one in a million. Still to come, fan interference gets taken to a new level. Just as a matter of course, I stuck my foot out. Plus, after holding a grudge for over 40 years, these legends show they still have some fight left in them as the countdown wraps up with the top two wackiest moments in CFL history. Welcome back out of the top two wacky moments in CFL history. Now, the Canadian Football League has such a rich tradition that it is fitting that our top two moments surround two of the most controversial plays the league has ever known. The parties involved in the wacky moment from 1957 quickly resolved their differences, while the old war horses from 1963 have never made up. Well, I got in because a police officer loaned me his badge, and I said I was security, and that's how I got in. Paul Hamilton. 
This is a fake. He throws a pass and then it for fifth. It is second by Ray Lovell. He may go all the way again. He's going to be cut off in the sideline. He was tripped by a man standing in front of the Winnipeg bench. Bear in mind, I was a little impaired. Bobble has come back to the Winnipeg bench and he is boiling and no wonder. And just as a matter of course, I stuck my foot out. I thought it was one of the Winnipeg players, but found out it was uh, a fan that was having a real good time. Can't get too mad at a guy like that. He fell down. I expected him to come back, throw his arms around me and say, you have got to be the funniest guy in North America. Instead of that, he wanted to assault me. The fact that this was a man who works in the legal profession, who you would assume would have respect for the rules. Being a defense attorney and tripping somebody has nothing whatsoever to do with each other. I'd be interested to see him prosecute that case. In the, in, in the court of sporting law, that a fan, as a guy is running down the field, could trip a guy and stop a play. Bizarre. There's been many games where I've been standing on the sideline, both as a player or as a spectator, and thought about that. <laughs> you know, thought about the fact that I can stick my foot out here and, 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 and be as infamous as that guy. Uh, thankfully, it doesn't happen very often because there's nothing that would make you crazier as a player than to have that, that occur. I thought it was a very funny thing to do. And in fact, it was the only interesting part of the whole game. Joe Cap and Angelo Moskett, these two came to blows at a Canadian Football League luncheon. The video of their fight has gone viral. I greeted Joe Cap with, Joe baby, I haven't seen you in 48 years, and he says, go We were supposed to be on the stage together, and so I took flowers up, and I offered it to him, and uh, he cussed at me. <laughs> well, I'm pretty well noted for not taking any Finally, he dangled right in my face and I took my cane and I whacked him. <laughs> I got a cane shot to my side of my head. <laughs> Obviously, you defend yourself. He punched me and that's when I went down. And when I went down, he kicked me in the butt. I think it's completely idiotic. Well, we invited both players to the show. Joe Cap said he didn't want to see this guy again. He, <laughs> he didn't say no, he said hell no. He hit me on the side of the head with a cane. Is this the weapon? This the this, weapon. Yeah. <laughs> if you take this and I bang you in the side of the you head. You think I'm gonna stand someone there? What are we doing talking about a play 48 years ago? What are you doing fighting about a play 48 years ago? Well, I'm gonna protect myself, I tell you. I've never carried this grudge. He's carried a grudge for 48 years. Yeah, I hold it. I hold the grudge for a long time. It's the one thing we've never discussed, I'm pretty certain, is a fight between a pair of 70-year-old men. That's never <laughs> happened, has it? You know, these are unique 70-year-olds. As a grown man, I don't want another grown man presenting me with flowers either. Uh, here's our offering to Clark. Get out of here! No, you take the... Here's my cane, and you oh. go... <laughs> and you're gonna give me something. Give me a nice cigar. Give me a bottle of Crown Royal or something. Scotch. This is sad. I'm Angelo Mosca, and someone jams a flower in your face. You think I'm gonna take that? You take a shot at me, I'm gonna take a shot at you. Don't you grow out of this stuff at one point in time? I think that we should get more fights between 70 year olds. <laughs> Joe Cap and Angie Mosca, two of the toughest players the CFL has ever known. That's crazy stuff. Thanks for joining us. We hope you enjoyed it.